Okay, hi everybody. This is Julie Howe. I'm the Health Science Librarian. I am talking with someone else today about her non-traditional path to education. So do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, so my name is Toshiana Began, and I've been at the college for about six years um, in different positions, actually. Um, I actually just started a brand new position as an admissions counselor, um, but I was currently in, or before that, I was in the uh, scholarship role, and I'm still kind of doing both at this point in time. They haven't um, hired anyone else, but like I said, I've been at the college for a little while, and I'm kind of familiar with a lot of the different departments and things. And you are bringing people in and helping them get their application in and get everything together. Yep. And then I'll still be um, assisting like with financial aid stuff and and helping students fill out scholarship applications, um, helping them complete their FAFSA. And then I kind of have that behind the scenes knowledge where I've been in the financial aid office, but I'll still be able to help them with that in the admissions counselor role as well. We love a jack of all trades here. Hey, I try my best. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess let's get into it. Tell me about your previous educational experience. So um, I am what you can call a non-traditional student, which I know a lot of our students are. Um, I actually first came to SEC um, as soon as I graduated high school. I wasn't very, I was more focused on wanting to hang out with my friends and just kind of mm -hmm. work and do my own thing. I wasn't very focused on education at that point in my life. Yeah. Um, so after I graduated, I was pushed a little bit, maybe by my family, just a little, you should go to college, you should do, you know, that's what you should do. But um, I wasn't really ready. Um, I still came anyway. Um, I ended up coming for a couple weeks and then I did not come back. Um, so my transcript will forever have the F's where I failed those classes when I first came. Um, and I ended up having to pay some money back where um, I was able to receive some financial aid. I had to pay that back um, as well. Um, so when I was about. You've been on the opposite end of these things that you're helping students with. Yes. Yes. So, so they I should not feel ashamed that they no. maybe weren't ready and they took a class. Absolutely not. Because a lot of other people have too. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, no, it's more than just me that work here that this has happened to too. So I've, I've I, talked to several of our employees. Um, but I will talk to them too if you'll let me know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll hook you up. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, one thing that I hear a lot of, especially working in financial aid, is that people that a student comes and they're ready for school and they're like I came x amount of years ago I wasn't ready I'm so ashamed I've done terrible I didn't do what I needed to do and the first thing that I will do is just kind of tell them hey I've done that too there's nothing to be ashamed of um mm -mm. we are I mean, here at SEC, I feel like we're very much a community college. We want to help our community. Um, and that's also, we are a community college who believes in second chances or even third chances sometimes. I mean, sometimes it takes us a while in order to be able to um, kind of get at that point in our lives where we might want to pursue our education, where we're ready to do that and we're ready to take on that path. Um, and then there's sometimes where we might start something and we might think that we're ready to do it and everything's great, but we never know what life's going to throw at us. Um, yes. That's another thing, too. You could have something just, you know, something out of the blue that happens that um, makes it harder for you to come. But, you know, we want to know or we want the students to feel like we are still here for you, regardless of what's happened in the past. Um, and yeah. we're going to try our best to work with you and see if there's anything we can do to help you. Um, or if you're currently struggling, if there's anything we can help you, um, you know, to to do to get past that, whether it's inside school, um, if you need tutoring help or whether it's outside help that uh, our students might need. So yeah, I like kind security of, or yes. some serious needs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we I think a lot it's, of great things available here. We do. Um, and I think it's important for students to hear that, you know, guess what? When you are fresh out of college, you maybe are not ready to make big decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've talked to other people doing this and it's been very interesting. They were like, I went and I'm not, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. But then I came back 
X number of years later, and I yep. was. Yep. And that's the same exact thing with me. So even when I graduated high school and mm -hmm. um, I got curious about this and I looked it up in our, our own records, my own record mm -hmm. of myself here, mm -hmm. my high school GPA was a 2.1. That's not a great GPA. That's not, yeah. that's not a shining GPA, but. I think that's a D average, right? Yeah. But since I have came back to school when I got more serious, the lowest grade that I've um, gotten on my transcript was a B. Amazing. So I've, I was able to get all A's and B's. And so that was something kind of important for me to see as well, because when I was in high school, I didn't feel that, um, I didn't feel like I was very smart. I mean, I just didn't feel like I was very capable because I had lower grades because I was more worried about hanging out with my friends. I just didn't feel like I, I just didn't feel like I was capable of going to school um, mm -hmm. and doing something that involved ac academics. And then when I came back, I surprised myself. I mean, I kid you not, I was like, I guess I am kind of smart. At least give myself like a little bit of credit. Like I can hang in here and I can do this. Um, and so we have a lot of students that will come back and they'll feel that way too. I've noticed, especially some of our older non-traditional students, um, they might feel like, oh, I'm too old to do this. There's, you know, I just don't think I'm smart enough, but yeah. people are so surprised when they come and they see how great, like a lot of our instructors and a lot of our people here are so good and they're so willing to work with you. And um, I think that sometimes there's a huge fear because it's like the worst fear in the world is like coming and then your instructor's like, you're not good enough. You're not. But we have such great, a such great team of people here that are so encouraging and so um, genuinely loving and caring towards our students and really want to help you succeed. Um, and we'll do everything in their power to, to do that. Um, so it's really nice to see that. Um, and it really just took me like, um, I had my first child at 19, so I was relatively young, um, and then had my second child at 24. And then I think I came back at around 26, 25, 26, I came back to school. Um, and I was just at a different point in my life and was ready, but just being able to take that little time away and kind of do my own thing and then realize that, you know, I want to get my education and I want my children to kind of see this part of mom because um, mm -hmm. I didn't have, um, I had several part-time jobs and tried to stay at home with them as much as I could. But, um, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to do more than just that. And, and um, so it was important for me to be able to come back to school and kind of, to not just prove that to myself, but prove that to my kids and and um, and just kind of put myself out there. It's a good example is that that it's yeah. never too late to do what you want to do. It's not. It's and, not. you know, at, when you leave high school, your brain is still developing. Your brain does not finish developing, I think, until you're 21. I'm going to have to check that fact because I keep saying it. But I think that is, too. That's what I want to say, too. So we'll just your yeah. brain is still developing. You're yeah. still learning like you're still mm -hmm. figuring things out. And it's really hard to make a big decision like that yeah. at that point. It so is. sometimes you need more time and that's mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. And I've told everyone that I've talked to, nobody's path is the same. Right. right. Relatively, Absolutely. nobody's path is the same. Yeah. So that's and that sometimes true. that is OK. Yeah. OK, so do you think your experiences and paths through education have been helpful? I absolutely do. Um, I feel like with working here at uh, the college, I feel like I'm able to relate to a lot of our non-traditional students. Um, I'm also a first generation college student um, and I'm really able to relate to some of those people um, and some of our students that we have because I didn't have anyone here kind of side by side holding my hand. Let me help you do the FAFSA, FAFSA and let me help you do all this. It was more I kind of had to figure out some things for myself, which, you know, we have a lot of students that do. Mm -hmm. But um, so I feel like I can really relate to a lot of that. Um, I can also relate to kind of the feelings of just not knowing and being kind of intimidated by the whole college process and or feeling like um 
just it's just so nerve wracking feeling like, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to, you know, be smart enough? Am I going to be capable enough? Um, am I going to make sure to get all my assignments and on time? There's a lot of stressors um, that go into beginning college, especially when you are. Um, when you're not as familiar familiarized with it, and I will say like as a first generation student, my parents didn't um, you know, they didn't attend college. So my mom did come here and get her associates, but mm -hmm. you're still first generation if no one got their bachelors and, and I am. But yeah, um, but I didn't I didn't have that, you know, mom or dad that was just hand holding me and helping me. Um, so I feel like I'm just able to to really relate with some of our students and kind of, you know, um, kind of explain all that to them and just be like, I totally get it. I get the overwhelm, the feeling like um, and uh, and kind of the the fear behind it um, because it is scary. It's scary to it put is. yourself out there and to start something new. Period. It's a very scary. It feels like such yeah. a big step and in some ways it is and in other ways you it's not as big a step as you think it is yeah. if that makes any sense like yeah once you get in it you're like in it your first yeah. semester is really kind of overwhelming and scary mm -hmm. and then it seems like after that it gets a little bit easier adjusting i guess i, I agree with that too i think it just gets to where it's more routine and you're more comfortable mm -hmm. right. um and Luckily, I've always been a person that puts myself out there and asks questions. I'm a question asker. If I don't know, I will ask. That's um, the but that I know, is an excellent trait to have. <laughs> but I know that not everyone's like that. Um, and so, like, for me to work here, I want to be that person that students can connect with and can feel comfortable with and can ask. Um, there's a lot of times I'll even just get like a feeling from someone and I'm like, do you need me to help you do this? Like just pops in my head and it might be something that they wanted to ask, but they're just like not wanting to because it's it's scary. Yeah. I can um, relate to that. When people come in learning comments, I can look at their face and it's almost like an intuition or a feeling. You're like, do you need some help? <laughs> but that's great. Everybody here yeah. wants to help. And that's yeah. one of the most important things is if you come and you're a, a traditional student, not traditional student or whatever, people yes. still want to help you no yes. matter what. Yes. And that's the one thing that I love so much about our college um, and our employees, um, even our students, like our, our students that are, you know, our student ambassadors and stuff yeah. that are used to here. I mean, we just have so many people that are willing to help that want to be there um, for our students um, no matter what and I'm and I have told people that and I'm like no really no matter what like it does not matter the question or whatever just you know you can come to me and you can ask and I'm always a person that's going to try my best to help you if I can't help you and there's no stupid questions oh no no no. There's no stupid questions no. because if I you don't people, know you don't know and that's yeah. fine but yeah. somebody will hopefully be able to answer it for right. you I tell students all the time, like if I have to talk to a group of students, I'm like, okay, does anybody have any questions? And they're all just kind of looking around. Nobody will say anything. And I'm like, listen, if you do have a question, I can guarantee you that your question is going to be the same question that at least 10 other people in this room are having right now. Like mm -hmm. it never fails. And then somebody's <laughs> like, oh yeah, I, I was thinking that in my head. And I'm like, <laughs> not a stupid question. It's just, you know, a lot of times our brains are thinking similar things. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So have you learned skills from other roles that you've transferred to your job here? Yes. So um, I have worked in. Let's see, I actually started out as a work study here. Um, when I first started, I worked as a work study in the Somerset uh, Testing Center. Um, and loved it, loved it, loved it in there. And then kind of progressed on to um, part-time role in there and then worked in the business office full-time and as a full-time temp. But I finally ended up transitioning to a full-time position here at the college, um, which was back in testing. So it was funny, I right. started back where my roots were. <laughs> um, and since I have moved on, but um, I feel like every area that I've been in I've able I've been able to learn a little bit of something and take it with me um, and another thing that I love doing is 
I feel like it's so hard for all of us, and I'm sure Julie, you understand too, but it's so hard for all of us to completely understand what other departments are doing here because we are, I mean, we want to collaborate, be together and stuff, but we're not in there. I'm not in there with you day to day. Right. I don't know the, you know, your day to day schedule and the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I definitely tried to take with me as I've worked in different areas is to try to like bring that knowledge of, you know, I know that this person done this and this in there. Mm -hmm. Um, I know they had this going on. Um, I, I try to take that with me wherever I go and and take it into consideration. Um, because when I've talked to other employees and things, there's a lot, and students as well, there's a lot of things that we do that not everybody is aware of. Um, I mean, we have, oh, how many people work at SEC? 400 and something people maybe work at SEC, oh, period. Like that, yeah. like, between all of the campuses and or the two the our two campuses, campuses and, and centers and so that's a lot to keep up with we can't always be in the know but no one thing that I try to do or try to have that like is okay who what does this department do who works in there and just little basics so that a way like if I have a student that is in London that needs tutoring I know I need to talk to Julie and try to, right. you know, and try to get that fixed. So I try and to. And then I would direct them me. to Mandy or the tutors immediately. Yes. Yes. And so I try to take a lot of that knowledge with me because when I jumped, I jumped around. When I jumped around to different departments, I did see that there's a disconnect um, yeah. between departments, not intentionally, not anything bad it just happens it just happens yeah, we're period. just busy doing our own jobs and sometimes mm -hmm. we don't get to communicate with other departments yeah. as much as we would like yeah um so that's something that i've i've really tried to continue to take that with me everywhere i've went um another thing is i am i'm currently working on my master's um in adult and higher education um cool. from moorhead yeah i went fall. to moorhead too yeah, I'll have it in fall and I'm so excited. Um, but I have learned so much about higher education um, just through taking those courses and through basically just, you know, diving in head first and mm -hmm. doing research. And it has been it has been difficult, I will say, just to work full time and to to do that as well. But I've, I have a lot of good takeaway um, from that. And it, I'm able to even learn about what other colleges are doing because we still get in our own little own little bubble here about, OK, SEC is doing this. But, yeah, you know, it's normal it's good to for us do to, that. Yeah, but it's good, it's, it's that good to try. You. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so, I, you know, um, yeah, having a teach a degree in higher ed mm -hmm. is going to be invaluable, I'd say. Yeah. So, um, and then I, I love education classes and just kind of learning about just the ins and the outs. Um, actually took a class on, you know, a uh, community college student. Loved mm -hmm. it. I loved it. That was Ooh. so interesting. Um, even more so just because I am at a community college, even more so. Right. Than, yeah. Than just learning about, you know, four years, just because there was so much information that I was like oh wow this really applies to SEC like I was able to just read through my book and see how it related to us or even how it didn't relate to us and just kind of compare and contrast so that was really neat um, that's awesome yeah so I love that yeah okay so this is my last question but feel okay. free to throw in any other information you want in the midnight library which is our common read Nora visits a library filled with books that contain different versions of her life story Mm -hmm. Would you choose a different version of your life story if you could? Absolutely not. Um, so I think that like I can look back and I can say, OK, yeah, I should have graduated high school. I should have came here. I should have gotten all my stuff done. I should have gotten married and had kids later. You know, I, I could say that. But I mean, would I still be here? Like, mm -hmm. would I still Sorry, I'm going to get like emotional, but <laughs> I mean, um, but that's the, that's the thing I wouldn't want to change is 
my understanding um, and like my ability to be able to relate to some of our students and some of our employees and and mm -hmm. just our community period um, because just being that person that has been like hey I have kind of been there before um, like we were talking about earlier there's nothing to be embarrassed about because you know you didn't do well one semester or I mean going from a two a 2.0 to a master's degree yeah is huge and you yeah. should be very proud of yourself yeah thank you thank you that's a I big am. jump yeah yeah and um so it's i wouldn't i wouldn't want to look back and, and change anything or do anything differently even though you know it probably would have been easier if i wouldn't have had kids and i would have gotten my education then but yeah. my children they can see mom in real time yeah. getting her degree right now you know they're going to be able to see me walk across that stage when I graduate so and that's really your, important all of your experiences made yes. you who you are I think because yeah. this has been pretty much the standard answer for all the interviews I've done nobody wants yeah. to change anything because every part of your life even the bad parts there was something to take from that mm -hmm. to bring on with yeah. you yeah, you're able to, um, yeah, to take pieces and and learn and then I mean it just continues to create you know who you are as a person yep. and um i'm able to like let's just say had i hope i wouldn't be like this but had i went to school right out of um or went to college right out of high school and you know would i be able to relate to the non uh traditional students in the same way i don't yeah. know i couldn't say that i could actually genuinely relate heart to heart with them because if i didn't do that I don't know if I would be able to, so I would never want to want to take that away or, or change that. Yeah, I think that's a, an excellent point. And the fact that you have been through so many of the processes mm -hmm. that you're leading students through. Yeah, is certainly a relief for them, I am sure. Yeah, because like we said, it's scary. It's overwhelming. There's so it much that has to happen, but you can say, hey, I made it through. Yes, I have a master's yes. degree. Hey, so, and another thing I will throw in, Julie, is mm -hmm. I also have a diagnosis of ADHD. And so for me to like to be able to get my master's degree and have that diagnosis that yeah. I didn't know I had until later in life, which yeah. could have correlated to my K through 12 experience. But probably I am a huge, huge believer that um, no matter what is going on and we can we can do a lot more um than we think ourselves are capable of mm -hmm. or even that other people sometimes think we're capable of if we we just can often their... surprise ourselves by Absolutely. how much we can achieve if we yeah. push yes. but it's also okay to say i can't push anymore and to that come too. back to it if yeah. you're not a failure yes absolutely just yeah. like i mean and that's what i had to do yeah. until i you know, got in the right headspace and kind of just paved my way a little bit and then and came back and done it. So um, and and that's what we want to be here for our students to um, to kind of just show them and, and to be that uh, to be that uh, that light or that person that's like, hey, you know, we are here for you as a human, mm -hmm. not just as we want you to get your education, but we're here human to human. Exactly. That's wonderful. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention before we close? I think that's it. I'm Yay. super excited that I got to talk to you. Me um, too. Yeah, and I might try to send some more people your way. <laughs> Please do. I would. I'm trying to gather as many stories as I can because yeah. I think it's important. I there are people in every aspect of the college who are non-traditional or who have had to pause their education for this, that, or the other. And I want students to know that's normal. Yes. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you can still thing. come back to it if you need yeah. to. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank right. you so much. I'm Thank going you. to stop the recording.